What we're talking about in this series is how to be devoted to God. What devotion really looks like. And usually that's not a word that many people say. We, we don't talk about devotion to anything. Our society is more quick. I'm only sticking with it until it inconveniences me. And then when it inconveniences me, I'm cutting it off. Um, but God calls all of his children to be devoted to him. And what does that mean? It has three components. That means we love him, that we're loyal or faithful to him, and that we're enthusiastic. We have joy about God and the things of God. And it's not just when things are good, it's continually. And so I like to use analogies that we all understand. Everybody in this room, um, for the most part, has a smartphone. And uh, if you don't have a smartphone, you have a dumb phone. But you have a phone. And that phone is full of potential. I mean, it can connect you with the world. It can literally make stock, exchange, stock exchanges for you. You can find out what's happening in sports and weather and news. You can do so much. There's so many applications for that phone. But one thing about the phone is no matter how great it is, no matter how many gigs, no matter if you got the Note 7 or the iPhone 7 or whatever, it all is useless without being plugged into a power source. And it was a perfect analogy how God used to do is take things that people understood and he put a truth alongside of it and they called it a parable. And that's what I'm trying to do in this whole series. I want you to understand just like your phone, you have so much purpose, destiny, and, and potential on the inside of you. But there's only so long you can go without being plugged in to the source. So I want you to look at that, that graph for a second and I'm just gonna explain it to you. We talked on the first week of this series about a power source. Right there you have a power source, you have a plug, you have a cord, and you have a device. This is what we're gonna go through. I'm explaining the whole series to you, okay? You have, a power, you have a power source, a plug, a cord, and a device. The power source is the originator, okay? That's where the power comes from. And then you have the plug, which is a distributor, okay? That distributes the power that is coming from the power source. And then you have a connector and that's the cord. No matter what you're doing, you gotta have something to go from your little brick to your device. And that's the thing that connects it. And then we have the device, which is the benefactor. It's the thing that receives the benefit of being plugged into the power source. Can I break that down very simply for all of us? Our power source as believers is God. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Our power source is God. And many of us plug to other things, but we get ran dry because it does not have the power to sustain our life. So our power source is God, and the plug is the word. Somebody say, the plug is the word. The plug is the word. Your plug is the word. It's the thing that distributes the power of God in your life. Okay? And then the connection point or the cord is two things. It's prayer and worship. If you ever get into the word, then you'll start to develop this insatiable hunger to pray and exchange with God, as well as to worship him, express your love to him. Accord, all that is, is an exchange point. It's where things on your phone can be uploaded and downloaded. Think about it. We're just talking about a power source right now, but when you hook that cord to your computer, it can take things that are not right on your device and be able to take them into another device and delete them and manipulate them and change them. The same way if you got something on your computer and you wanna upload it to the phone, that's what worship and prayer does, it exchanges with God. And then you have the device, which is you. And I want you to realize this, that it's God's desire for you to always stay plugged into him. That if you could really understand that the power source of God is available for you. It says in his word that by his divine power, he's already got a power source. He's made it possible for you to plug in and the, distribu the distribution of that power comes to your life. And it transfers and you're able to live a life that you didn't think was possible in this flesh suit. When you're frustrated, you're going to be like, how do I have peace that passes all understanding? When that sexual urge just comes up and you're ready to do something and the peace of God comes over you to calm those raging demons. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. When you're so hurt, but somehow you have unspeakable joy. That's not because we have it in us. It's because we're plugged into the power source. Okay. 
So my goal in this entire series is to help you understand the Bible, prayer and worship, and your life in a new way so that you can stay charged up and live this life and reach your potential. I think about it so many times we're at the point of doing something critical on our phone and then we are drained and we lose power. And at that moment, whatever we were doing has to stop until we plug into a power source. God said, Michael, as I was praying for you this week, he said, many of my people, their dreams, their visions, their potential have stopped because they stopped plugging into me a long time ago. And today I want to restore that in your life. I don't care where you are today. I don't care how hurt you are. I don't care what frustration you met this week. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. You can be balling. You still need to be plugged into the power source. And so today, we're going to go into part two of the plug, talking about the word of God. Because this is the anchor. I said it last week, but if you can only do one thing in your life, if you only can do one thing in your life, I want you to plug in and read the word of God. So we're going to go to this and I want you to stay on that first page real quick, the front page. And I want you to understand one thing. If you don't get anything from what we taught last week, the Bible is alive. It's not a book of historical facts and cultural norms that were back in the day. It's alive. And the word tells us in Hebrew chapter four, verse 12. Look, I put all the little scriptures there on the page right there for you. Look at you. You just so blessed today. Look at you. It says, for the word of God, say it with me, is living. It's active. I want you to understand that the Bible is not just the book that you read. It is the inspired word of God. We heard last week that the Bible is God. It says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So when we read this Bible, there should be some expectation behind that. It should be like, God's about to speak to me. God's about to tell me something that I didn't know. He's about to reveal some truth to me. And I want you to realize this. So I'm going to run through this first page really, really fast because I want to help you practically today. And if you did not hear last week's message, I need you to go back and listen to it because it was probably some of the most foundational revelatory teaching I've ever done. It'll change your life about the word of God. But I want you to fill in these blanks real quick. So go with me. Okay. So faith is the blank activates the word. Faith activates the word. We need to get this Bible alive in our life. A lot of people say, you know, it's so boring to me. You know, it doesn't really work. You know what I'm saying? I try to read the word, but every time the spirit of sleep comes over me and the spirit of distraction comes over me and, you know, I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to focus, but I just feel like it doesn't work. We have to help it come alive. And the thing that makes it come alive is everybody shout at me, faith. Faith, faith makes the word active in our life. So people are like, you know, my faith is low, though, Pastor Mike, I've been disappointed. I mean, I've seen stuff before. I've been hurt in this area. I, I tried to believe that one time and it didn't, didn't come to pass. So my faith is low. So what do I do when my faith is low? Uh, how, how do I activate the word? Well, I'm glad you asked because the next blank is revelation activates faith. Revelation activates faith. And I know that may seem like a lot. Please go back again and watch next week's uh, last week's sermon but all that means very simply is when the word of God is revealed to you when you have a aha I get it moment that then increases you and many of us for our faith to be inspired we need to get revelation the Greek word is rhema we need rhema we need revealed truth we don't just need logos and logos is the written or spoken word you're hearing me or you can read the Bible and that's nothing but when God reveals it to you then you're like oh my God that happened to me yesterday oh God's trying to show me something he told me in his word not to do that when you get revealed truth it increases your faith so you're saying, okay, I need revelation now. Well, Pastor Michael, that sounds like a big word, and I don't really know how to get that. Do you get that at Walmart, Target? Where do they sell revelation at? <laughs> Let me tell you, this is the main point of last week's message. Meditation activates revelation. When we sit and slow down and quiet ourselves and make time to just spend time reading the Word of God, not sport reading. Some of y'all, y'all read the Bible and it's like, and for the gospel of the world. And you're just going for sport. I read three chapters today. And God said, what'd you get? Nothing. 
because it was just words on a page. Nothing I meditated on. Nothing I mulled over. And what we've been encouraging everybody to do in this time of devotion is to take time and meditate on the word of God. Who told you that you got to literally read 50 chapters every day to be spiritual? God said, I'll speak to you through that three sentences you read. And keep reading it. And keep reading it. And I'll let it go and you, I'll start revealing my truth to you. And that's what God wants us to do. He doesn't want us to prove ourselves to people. I'm so dignified. God has anointed me. I have memorized all of Psalms 109. And now I'm practicing on Psalms 119. Stop. I want you to do that. I want you to get that. But God says if it's not in your heart, if you can't apply it in your everyday life, I'd rather you stop all that and just meditate on it. And then what happens in Joshua 1, 8 happens to us. It says, don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. What is the next word? Meditate. It says, Med meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. And this is the part I really want for everybody. When you meditate on the word, it says, then you will be prosperous and successful in everything that you do. How many people in here want to be prosperous and successful in everything that you do? You just got the major key. Major key alert. You just got the major key. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Meditate on the word of God. So today, I'm going to go to part two because, you know, that all sounds real the theological. And that is really theological. That's what the word says and how to. But I want to make it super practical. Because the one thing I do not like is when people come up here and the faith and revelation and everything rhymes. And it's all the Asians and everything. And I feel good. when it, And then people are like, huh? So I wanted to take this whole day and make, make the word of God practical in your life. And so I want you to have a life built on the word of God. And I want you to turn your page over and I want us to look at Matthew chapter 7. I want your life to be built on the word of God. Not on friends, not on social media, not on the tragedies that are happening in our world and in our city. If that's what's building you right now, if that's why you get up in the morning to fight the man and have the cause, if why you're getting up and living is just for your family, at some point it's going to fail you. But the word says if you build on the word of God, it will become an anchor. Look what it says. And I'm going to read this out of the message version today, which is a paraphrase. And all that means is they take the literal translation and then they paraphrase it so it can be easier to understand. But it unpacks some, uh, some amazing truths. Look at it. Matthew 7, verse 24. It says, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life or home, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are fundamental words. Listen to this, underline this, words to build your life on. If you work these words into your life, that's what I'm trying to do over this series. I'm trying to make you see that the word of God is where you need to spend more time. That being devoted to God is going to change every area of your life. It'll change your finances. It'll change your marriage. It'll change your sex life. Some of y'all say, he said that? Yep, I said the worship of the Lord is good when you spend time with God. I'm saying this because so many people live double lives, and I said it last week. We live our church life, and then we live our real life. Come on, you know it. If another group of people came in here, you would change. Or excuse me, if you was out with them at another place, you would change. But what God is saying is, I want my word to be in everyday life. And so that's why we have to build our life around the word of God. It says, if you work these words into your life, you are like a smart carpenter who builds his house on a solid rock. Now, this is not a disciple saying this. This is Jesus talking right now, okay? And it says, but if you just use my words in Bible studies, like you just come to church, look at the notes and say, that was great, and you don't work them into your life, you are like a stupid carpenter. Now, I didn't say that. The work, Jesus said it. You're a stupid comp carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach. When a storm rolls in and the waves came up, it collapses like a house of cards. Let me help you understand why the Bible is so important. It's because storms are coming. 
Man, I wish they weren't. I wish I could stand up here and say, as soon as you give your life to God, all the storms are gone. 75 degrees every day with the rainbow and birds. That ain't life. And many people get disappointed because they think that when they come to Christ, everything is good. It's not that everything is good. You just will never walk alone. Okay. And so what ends up happening is storms are coming. And God says to us very clearly, you know what? I can't keep the storms from coming, but I can point you to something that when the storms do come, you'll be able to stand. When the divorce happens, you won't fall. When they lay you off of that job and the winds of life are blowing you and you're about to fall, he says, if you have the word on the inside of you, you're like a smart carpenter. He said, they can blow, baby, blow. He can bring, they can huff and they can puff and they can try to blow your house down. But it's not going to happen because the word is your foundation. The reason, if I can speak very frankly, why with all the tragedies that are going on in our world right now with racism and politics and finance problems why everybody's so shaken is because they don't have the foundation of the word of god I, I mean you can i see people shouting praising and they acting fool out here in these streets it's not because we're not angry or we, we think there's injustice or whatever the case you can have your opinion but i'm a christian before i'm black Some of y'all not going to come back next week. Some of y'all not going to come back next week, and that's okay. Because your spirit man rules you, not my flesh. See, it said any man that it be, it is um, any man that is Christ, he becomes a new creature. That means the old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yeah, we need policy change. Yeah, we need systemic change. Yeah, we need things to happen. But my response is not going to be like the world's response because I'm a Christian. I am Christ-like first. Before I'm black. Before I'm African-American. And the reason why so many people jump on this other train and say whatever and do whatever is because they're not anchored in the word of God. Am I sad? Listen, that tragedy happened three miles from where I live. That could have been me. The, the, uh, okay, so I don't want you to think that I'm making this a small issue. What I'm saying is that our God is bigger. This ain't new, y'all. This ain't something that just started happening. And our God has sustained it. He who has been faithful to see us in every situation is going to bring us through this. And if my people who were called by my name would not protest, but would humble themselves and see while everybody was out there marching this week, we was off in here every night praying that the will of God would come to our, our house, that it would give us solutions to the problem, that we would be able to start with us. Some of y'all not coming back next week, but it's okay. I'll be here. What I'm trying to say is nobody can guarantee you that that won't happen again. And if you're going to be blown to and fro by every circumstance that happens, you're about to live a real wavy life. Finances. Who knew eight years ago the house market was going to crash? Nobody knew that. But when it did, it affected so many people's lives. But you know who was really affected? Only the people who didn't have a foundation in the word of God. What I'm telling you is the word of God is the foundation to your entire life. And you need to have a life built on the word of God. Can somebody shout amen at me real quick? Okay. So this is what I want to do. I want to make it very practical. Everything that I'm going to say today is very simple, something you can go out of here and do. So how do I work that into my life? Because I need that in my life. I need the word of God to be my foundation. So your first point, and, and I'm just going to warn you right now, I got three major points and I got a lot of sub points, some that's not even on your notes. I kind of went overboard today. That's why I did this for you. But I really want you to get this today. So the first one is I must accept its authority. I must accept its authority. 
See, the word of God working in your life always begins with your attitude about it. I'm going to say that again. The word of God working in your life always begins with your attitude about it. You say, um, how are you going to view it is my question. Is it just a good book written by a good man that has good principles in it? Or is it the inerrant, infallible words of God? That's a difference. See, some of us just think this is a self-help book. We think it's like a Joel Osteen book, like living your best days right now. Like, we, no, that's what you act like. Like when I need to be encouraged, listen, my friend. He blinks a hope. I don't know what he's looking at. I don't know. I love Joel Osteen. He ministers to me all the time. Joel Osteen's book is not the Bible. This thing is the Magna Carta. It will change your entire life. Somebody shout, alive. alive. It's alive. And that's why we have to view it in that way. We got to accept the word of God. When we come to it, we have to accept it. And you know, I know a lot of people say stuff like this, but Pastor Mike, I just can't accept it because there's so many things that are contradicting. There's so many things I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? And to that, I say, I accept a lot of things I don't understand. I don't understand digestion, but I still eat. So what we have to realize in this world that's coming up with new philosophies and new, new thoughts and new age stuff and worshiping trees and doing stuff with snakes. No, 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 no. You know what? I've made a decision, something like this. I don't understand everything in the Bible. Your pastor does not. And see, most pastors won't even admit that to you, but we're a humble, open, and transparent church. There's some stuff I'll be like, maybe this is. But what I've realized is I don't understand the Bible, but I don't understand my life either. There's things I don't understand how it works. So in the balance of, am I going to trust me who just got here 29 years ago? Or am I going to trust the word who's been here throughout the ages? It calls it the rock of ages. That thing was, is, and is to come. It's the thing that the, the Bible tells us that when all of us are gone, it'll still be here rolling strong. I made a decision that I'm just going to trust the word of God. I'm just going to trust the word of God more than I trust myself. And when we make that decision, we start on a journey to grow. And when we start growing, that's when things we didn't understand get revealed truth. See, everybody wants to know all the facts up front. And God said, you don't, you don't have access to all the facts up front yet. His disciples even asked him, why when you tell the mysteries of the kingdom, do you do it in parables? He said, because everybody can't get the truths of this thing. Until they mix it with some faith and start believing me. And if they view it right, if they accept it, then I'll start revealing my truth to them slowly but surely. And that's why God takes us on a spiritual journey. We're, we're stepping in this thing. Ain't no leaps and running. We are stepping in this thing. How many people have been in a close relationship with God for over 10 years? Come on, just raise your hands high. How many of you are still learning things about God today? <laughs> Look at y'all. I want to let everybody know that this is not a sprint. This is a marathon with God. And he wants us to grow. Somebody shout at me, grow. grow. He wants us to grow. And so that's why we have to work the Bible into our lives. It cannot just be something that we do religiously. It has to be something we will work into our lives and it all begins with our attitude. Okay. I, I want to just say something very strong right now. Our world is going down. And I'm not saying that as one that doesn't have hope or anything like that. I believe that the light shines the brightest in the darkest times. This is the greatest time for the church because we are about to be a high beam coming up out of this mug. And the, we're going to be a, a, a city, like a city set up on a hill. Everybody going to be like, I'm sick of this. Where's transformation? That's what this is going to be like. But without God, it's going down and it's going down quick. What I'm trying to tell you is that culture changes, but God doesn't. Culture changes, but God doesn't. And that's why we have to learn more and be committed to 
to the word of God. God's word stands. God's word stands supreme. And it is so important for us to accept it. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And this is Paul talking. And he's going to tell us how important it is for us to receive and accept the word of God. Even if we don't understand everything. It says, man, I am so thankful for this Thessalonian church. I thank God for you continually. Because when you receive the word. And I want you to underline that word received. Because right there in the Greek, it actually unpacks the real meaning of it. He said, that word literally means dekomai. It's dekomai in the Greek. And it means you welcomed a stranger. It means you didn't know me, but you told me to come in. It's kind of like when you got two friends meeting up at a place and they're bringing and introducing a friend, but the friend that they introduce and gets there first and they like, hey, my friend's outside. Can they just come in? It's kind of weird for them to sit in the car right now. And you don't know them, but you know the friend. So you, you say, yeah, they come and knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. And you say, hey, how you doing? James, right? James, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, come on in. I don't know you but I'm gonna receive you. This is what that word means right now. He said, this Thessalonian church, it received the word of God that was brought by us. You received it when you heard it from us. And then you realized that it wasn't the words of man, you accepted it. So they received first. They let it in, not understanding everything about it. That's what you're going to have to do with the word of God. You're going to have to let it in and not understand everything. And then you start accepting it. And look what it says. It said um, you, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but actually as it is the word of God, which now and only now, since you've received it and accepted it, it can be at work in those who believe. See, the thing is, the word needs to be at work in your life. But it's not going to be at work until you accept it. Well, Pastor Mike, I mean, I tried last week. I tried to do that stupid reading plan. First off, it was frustrating just trying to find it. And then I did it, and I didn't feel like nothing happened. I didn't feel like it, it made a difference in my life. It was because your view on it was it wasn't going to make a difference in your life when you started reading it. You had no belief and no faith that that thing was going to change your life. And what I'm saying to you is that the first thing you have to do for the word of God practically to come alive in your life so that you can build on that foundation is you have to accept the word of God. And when you accept it, something amazing begins to happen in you that you'll begin to receive it differently. God, this is your word. It can make a difference in my life and you'll receive it and then it'll start moving and changing things. Your attitude will change. Your wants will change. Your desires will change, but it won't change if your view is blocking it. So I need all of us to understand that we have to accept the word of God. Here at Transformation Church, we believe in the closed canon of scriptures. That means that there's going to be nothing added, nothing subtracted from it. It is the supreme word of God. It is God's word to man, authored by God and it written by men. And I want to say something very clearly because not many people say this, but it's a passion of my heart. If you ever hear me say anything that is not in line with the word of God. Stop listening to me. Listen to the word of God. I can't tell you how many people right now get caught up in a man. And then when the man starts tripping, everybody starts tripping. That tells you they didn't have a foundation. It just was, what did he say? He said, we supposed to what? Okay. I want, want y'all to be like, well, but Pastor Mike, you said such and such, but in the word in 1 Thessalonians 16 and 19, it says, I need people that are in the word of God. I need you for accountability. I need you to understand because we are all, everybody say humans. And every human has the ability to fall. But if we keep with each other and stay in the word of God, then everything changes. But we have to accept the word of God. So more than what any man says, I don't care who your favorite preacher is. I don't care who they are, how good they look, how good they preach. If they stop preaching the word of God, turn them off. Because the word of God is the thing that's going to change in your life. Okay. So point number two, 
I must assimilate, assimilate its truths. I must assimilate. And that's just a fancy way of saying, I got to work it into every area of my life. That's it. I, I need to work the word of God into every day of my life. It's not a Sunday thing. The word of God is not, some of y'all blow off the smoke on your Bible on Sunday morning like, Phew and dust just fills the room and you're like it's time to go to church this morning and we're going that is not why we have the word it's supposed to be worked into our marriages into our finances into our businesses the word of god has something to say on the way we think in our friendships and we have to assimilate it into our life the word of god works if we follow its pattern. So I'm about to just give you a couple of things um, that you can use to help the word of God work in your life. Number one, how do I assimilate it in my life? This is not, uh, this is in your notes, by listening to God's word, by listening to God's word. And this is um, apparent, and maybe I'm preaching to the choir this morning, because y'all are here, y'all are here listening to God's word, and I'm proud of you. Thank you for coming this morning. But you need to be listening to God's word all the time. You need to prioritize how often you listen to the word of God. I'm talking about in your everyday life. Just right now, take an inventory of how much you listen, read, see, hear the word of God. And a lot of people is like, ooh, last Sunday was good. Last Sunday was real good. <laughs> and if you missed that week, it was like two weeks ago was real good. Or I opened up my phone for two minutes before I went into this hard situation and I read whatever scripture was there, but then I just, you know, had to back out because I got a text message from old girl. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say is hearing God's word needs to be a priority to every believer. And I'm going to say something right now that's a little strong because I'm teaching today. I, I, I want to help you. Um, and you may think that there's a different agenda, but there really is not. It's amazing to me how many people don't prioritize church. Like they don't, like church is a if I feel like it type of thing. Like how do, uh, I'll come if it's like uh, Sunday, oh, okay. I did get that new shirt I need to show off to everybody. Or the game starts late so I think I can make it this Sunday. Come on, let's be honest. Well, my kids was acting right today so we decided to come. And I was in the lobby a couple weeks ago, and I see this certain person, and they come up to me. They, they come to this church every quarter, like four times a year. They come, no, literally, they come up every quarter, and every time they come up, it's like the first time that they ever were here. And they was like, ah, Hazard Mike, I'm so glad I came this Sunday. And they say that same phrase every single time they come. And in my heart, in my mind, I'm thinking, if you would have come last Sunday, you would have been glad you came. And if you would have came the Sunday before that, you would have been glad you came. It's not because I'm preaching. Whoever we put up here, they're speaking the word of God. And what we need to do is listen to the word of God. You're not hearing it at your job. You're not hearing it on social media. You're not hearing it in your spheres of influence. This is a place where you can come every week and hear the word of God. It needs to be a priority to you because when the word of God gets into your life, it starts producing fruit. There's a, a Bible story where Jesus talks about the seed and the sower. And he said the word was thrown out on all types of people. And he said, but everybody didn't receive it. He said some had thorns. Some people had cares of life. Some people it produced fruit. But it said this in Luke and it's in Luke. Um, where is it? Luke 8, 18. See, y'all got the sheet. It said, therefore, consider carefully how you listen. I want you to understand that you have to listen right because Romans tells us that hearing comes by us listening to the word. I'm telling you, you need to get the word into every area of your life. Some of y'all fall asleep with the TV on. You should fall asleep with the word playing in your house. 
Why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? That seems very elementary. I'm telling you, something will begin to happen in your spirit. You'll wake up with a better attitude. There'll be peace in the middle of your night. Some of you need to listen to sermons. Th listen back to sermons that I'm preaching. Listen to sermons of other people. You need to listen to the word. Some of you need to cut the radio off or I iTunes or Spotify just because I like music. Great, but I like to live an abundant life that's charged up as well. And God says, if you get in my word, if you listen to it, I'll begin to charge you up. You are plugged into me I will distribute power to you and that comes by us everybody say hearing. hearing we have to hear the word of God faith is what you need to make the word work and the word is what you need to make faith come when you realize that in your life you will spend more time hearing the word of God let me give you another way to assimilate it or work it into your life you need to read God's word and that seems very elementary and very, uh, very um, simple, but many of us don't do it. Guys, I'm not coming after anybody. You should not feel condemnation in here, but if you feel conviction, that's a good thing. Conviction is that thing that's like, see, I've been telling you, come on, man. I got something for you that I can't trust you with until you get in this. Well, God, I'm busy doing what you called me to do. He said, I miss my time with you. I miss spending time where me and you used to talk and we could be uh, close. The blessings have now replaced me. Is that the case in any of our life? Now God blessed us with the college career and we don't have any time to spend with God or in his word. Or now we're in a relationship. I was single and ugly for so long and God blessed me. <laughs> but now all I do is go to God when this is not working. We never go to each other any other time. And God's saying, I just need you to read my word. I need you to see what I say in my word. And this is a way I like to think about it. You need to read God's word like a meal. Read it like a meal. Many of us have been fasting this entire week. And so a lot of times when it was time to eat, I would go away from the kitchen and I would go and read my Bible. I would eat it. And some people say, you know, oh, the, just the Bible, Pastor Mike. I just, I don't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't stick with me and one of my mentors asked me this one time he said Michael what did you eat three weeks ago on Tuesday for dinner I, I, I don't know he said right but you still ate and it's working in your life he, he said you don't remember what you ate but you needed it for nourishment the same thing with the Word of God well I didn't remember it I don't know if this is applying he it's not about it applying at that very moment. It's for nourishment for your spirit and your soul. Until you start remembering everything you ate, don't use the excuse that it's just not sticking. It's not, it's not working. God's saying, I need you to eat my word. Everybody say daily. daily. That's a devotion life. Even Jesus called it the bread of life. And in Matthew 4, 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, so how does that work? I'm gonna give you just three, uh, four practical steps. I told you I went overboard with the notes today, okay? These aren't on your thing. One thing that some of you need to do to assimilate and make the word work in your life is you need to get a paper Bible. I, I, I'm just gonna help you. You need to get a paper Bible. I love technology. I, we have the scriptures on the screen for you. We have all of this stuff that technology is great. I use it. I don't even care if you don't bring your Bible to church. You know what I'm saying? I don't bring my Bible to church usually. This is the Bible that I use in my quiet time and I pray with. I've had this Bible for over 10 years. This is my Bible. It's wrinkled. It's broken in. It has stuff highlighted in it. This is my Bible. I thought it was so dope when I went to Mardell's and got Michael A. Todd on it. And they asked me gold or silver, and that's when platinum was in, so this is platinum. <laughs> but this is my Bible, okay? I write notes in it. God spoke to me. There's things that he's given me, and I got stuff scribbled all over this Bible. This is my Bible. And what I want for every one of you is to get your Bible. Get a Bible. If you really want the word to work in your life, well, Pastor Mike, it's just so inconvenient. I wear little clutch purses and I ain't carrying around no big old Bible like that. <laughs> it's just so more convenient. I can get it. Well, 
the cell phone is amazing, the computer and the tablet, but it has this really bad tool called distraction that comes along with it. Has anybody ever been reading a word and then you get a text message or an email or, or somebody, you find out that Kanye and Kim was about to break up, then they back together, now they're having a new baby, North and less. I don't know. It's just so much that can come and we're right at the point of God speaking and giving us revealed truth and ding! And isn't it funny how we never get back to it till the day after? It's like, oh shoot, oh Lord. You, I'm encouraging people, if you really want to work this into your life so you can be prosperous in everything you do, get you a paper Bible. And I don't care what kind of Bible you get, just get one you can understand. There's all kind of translations. There's all kind of things that you can do. You can get ones that's pink. You can get ones that have peace signs on it. You can get uh, your face monogrammed on the front of it. You can do whatever you want to do, but I want you to get a Bible. I want you to get into it. I want you to spend time in God's word. I want you to mark in it. I want you to get a full box of highlighters and make that mug look like a kid colored all in it. I want you to get in the word of God. Why? Because when you get in this word then it gets into you I want you to know the word of God is so important to you bring me this Bible right here I want y'all to see this now this is my mother-in-law Ladana's Bible and when I came in and I saw her with this mug cracked open, I said, why you got Shaq's Bible? Why are you? I mean, she's literally sitting there. Them, the words is, the font is like this. But hear what I'm saying to you, that I don't care if this Bible was eight feet tall. The one thing I know about my mother-in-law is she gets in it. What I'm challenging you is if you have a pocket Bible or this brick. <laughs> I want everybody in this place to get a paper Bible. They sell them at Mardell's, they sell them at Walmart. Find you something where the distraction won't be as easily accessible so that God can speak to you. I read studies this week that said digital reading, you don't... Uh, um, um, you don't retain as much in digital reading. And I was like, uh-uh, that ain't true. And there's study after study after study. They said there's even something that happens in the brain when you're able to see how much progress you're making and you're able to see that you only have so much left. Get a paper Bible. That's a practical, you didn't know you was gonna come to church and the pastor's gonna say, point number three, get a paper Bible. But this will help you work it into your life, okay? Let me give you another one. Set aside a time. We don't make an appointment to read God's word. And so whatever we don't schedule in our busy lives does not happen. Set a time. For me, my time is usually early in the mornings, not preparing for sermons. Y'all, because some people are like, you a pastor. You, you get paid to be in the Bible. No, 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 no. It's evident when I don't spend my personal time with God. I fall completely off. I'm mad. I'm praising. I'm, I'm saying stuff in the name of Jesus that's all not like him. I have to be in the word of God for myself. So usually at six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, whenever my son MJ wakes up and he starts crying, it's my watch. And so I get up and I make him a bottle and then I open the word of God. And I start saying, God, what do you have? Before I do anything else today, I need you. I need to plug in and I need you to charge me up. It's worth you being inconvenienced and losing some sleep. Or let me help you go to bed earlier. That last 30 minutes of that show was pointless. <laughs> and you have it on DVR. But we had to watch it tonight. And then while God's trying to speak to you to give you direction for your whole life, you miss it because you are asleep. And God's saying, I need you to make me and this a priority. So make time for the word of God. Let me tell you something else. Try this. I'm not telling you this because I just want you to do something. I want you to try it. Let me tell you something else that you can do. Have a plan. 
Have a plan. See, some of us, when we get charged up to ready to read the word, we're those flipping point uh, people in the word. God, where do you want me to go today? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know. Making up scriptures. God told me to go to Luke 102. There is no Luke 102. How many people, let's be real, have thought you was going to a scripture and you missed it? Yep, get in your Bible. And then others of you saying, I'm just going to read it straight through. I'm going to just start in Genesis and I'm going to go all the way through. Listen, that can be rough. That's, that's, whoo. There's four chapters of just begats and he begat him and he begat him. You'll be reading for eight hours of begats. But all of the word has life in it, so we're supposed to read it. So one of the things that I love to do is the one-year Bible, where it's a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New Testament, a psalm and a proverb every day. It's a plan. And what happens with that plan is I have a schedule that, you know what, at this time I have 15 minutes. I have 30 minutes to spend with God this morning. I'm not going to aimlessly like, okay, that was shorter than I thought. Well, maybe I'm done today. I'm going to have something that's structured so that I can stay in this plan. I can hear from God. And then when you're in Leviticus and it's talking about infectious skin diseases, that's when you thank God for a song. <laughs> I want you to get a plan to read the Bible. There's so many different plans and some of y'all like, oh God, okay, he's talking about plans and all. I'm telling you, this can be the best year of your life it's, if it's the best year of your life spiritually. You'll keep coming to the altar for the same stuff. You'll keep going through the same cycles. Your marriage will still be in the same place. And God says, I have given you my word that's alive and it gives you power to live this life in a way that you've never ever lived it, but you just got to plug in. So I want you to get a plan. With that one-year Bible, there's 1,189 chapters in your Bible. So if you read three to four chapters every day for a year, you can read through the whole Bible. There's 150 Psalms. Just take three Psalms a day and read them. There's 31 Proverbs. You can start every month and just read through the Proverbs. I don't care what you do, but you need to get a plan. Get a plan. And you version, how many people have the Bible app, the you version Bible app? Y'all, they have so many amazing resources, plans about um, heart, um, heart issues and forgiveness and all. Just find a plan and stick to the plan. Because when you do that, then the word of God becomes alive. It becomes a foundation that you build your house on. And let me just give you an advice. If you start a plan, just read that day's plan. If you get behind, don't try to catch up. We're making a life of reading the God's word. We're going to be devoted. So when you do it next year, it'll be there again. That scripture will be there. Some of y'all like, you doing that one year Bible? You on that reading plan? It's like, yeah, today I got 62 chapters to catch up on. It's not going to happen. No, I'm trying to tell you. And then you begin to get discouraged. And you, you'll go and you see all the days missed. And it tells you 59 days missing. you just like. And then the enemy will try to set in with condemnation and guilt and all that stuff. Just start on that day. The word for that day is going to be the word that you need to hear. Amen? Another point right here, this last thing on this part. Don't just read the Bible. Let the Bible read you. Don't just read it. Let it read you. That's when you say, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? Now, I just read this scripture, but what are you trying to speak to me? How do I apply this in my life? What, what are you really trying to get me to understand? The Bible uses the metaphor. It calls itself a mirror. And what do you do in mirrors? You reflect. Just think on it. Meditate on it. Look at that scripture over and over. See, ask God, how do I apply this in my life? And what happens is he begins to work stuff in you that nobody else has to say. You'll read a scripture about attitude and how you're supposed to love, and he'll reveal to you. That, that right there, I need you to check that. No, that ain't me, God. He said, yeah, it is. Read it one more time. Ooh, that is me, God. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Let it read you. Okay. And don't try to absorb everything you read. Please don't. I'm really trying to help you because these are misconceptions that super Christians have. I pray for an hour. I read my word for an hour. I stand in the presence of God naked for an hour. I am going back to the garden. Adam, that's all that's bull. 
because some of those very people are the meanest people in the world. You have no fruit in your life. You spending all that time with no fruit? At least start doing something productive. Get a job. So what I'm saying is it's not about quantity of time. It's about quality of time. Has everybody got me? So how do I assimilate this into my life? By exploring God's word. Exploring. I study God's word. And there are so many tools. And I'm going to do a sermon series on it about how to study God's word. Because this is not a church where you come to hear hooping and hollering and me to run and for us to feel good. This is a church where you get taught how to do something. Because after all that, I'm fine with preachers who do that. Because there's some hoop and howling preachers that teach you. But there's a lot of them that it's more about the experience than it is about you learning something. And my job is to equip you so you can go out of here and do something. Not hoop and holler because you ain't even hooping and hollering here. So you sure ain't go hoop and holler at your job. So we just have all of these mute, un um, unproductive Christians and that won't, won't happen here. We will be a church of transformation. And so I want you to get this. So you're going to need to start exploring the word of God, studying it. You can explore it with commentaries, Bible dictionaries, concordances, cross-reference Bibles, dictionary of biblical imagery, English dictionaries. Half the stuff that I tell y'all, I look up what the word means in the Webster's Dictionary. And it'll begin to reveal truth to me because I was like, that said this word. And then I looked up what that word means and God will reveal like, oh, that's what. But I'm exploring it. I'm not just reading it for sport. I'm trying to grab something out of it you can do it with um, um the concordances the strong concordance and study bibles on marriage and and finance you can do it with all kinds of stuff but let me tell you let me let you in on a secret the best way in the world to study the bible is with others when you get in bible studies or what we call them here belong groups and you start walking with people and studying the word of God and seeing their perspective and what they get out of it and how God moves, it will literally change your entire life. We want you to explore God, but we want you to do it with others. Hear me, sign up for a belong group. Some of you are living so isolated and alone and God's saying that is not where I want you to live. I always do my best work in community and I want you to sign up for one of those because as you explore God's word about marriage and finance and about the sermons we talk about here, God will begin to reveal his truth to you and you can work it into your everyday life. And then the magic of Psalms 119 11 happens. It says, I haven't just read it. I haven't just listened to it, I have now hidden it in my heart. And guess what happens when you hide the word of God in your heart? Sin goes. See, this is what the whole thing is about. Pastor Mike, why you want us in the word? Because when you get the word hidden in your heart, sin leaves your life. Some of y'all have things that you do and you look at it afterwards and you're like, that's not even me. I hate that. I don't want that to be me. I don't want to respond to that to my, like that to my kids. I don't want to respond like that to this coworker. How in the world did I walk into this place and keep stealing these gummy bears from Reese's? Lord, that is not me, but I just keep doing it. Walking in the crit strip, getting taste testies of all the drinks. You? She said, no, 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 not me. Hear me. But we do things that our flesh and our sin want us to do. And God says, if you would get this principle, if you would hide the word in your heart, it would make you not be able to sin against me. You get insurance to be able to stand against sin that tries to come in your life. So I promise you, if you hear the word of God, you read the word of God, you explore the word of God, and you do it in a small group, God's word will come alive to you. My last point, I must apply its principles. And this may be the most important one. Look at James chapter 1, verse 22. It says, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourself. You know, a lot of people come to church today and be like, Woo! that word from Pastor Mike today, I heard the word. It was a word from the word, word God. <laughs> and we check a box. And we act like we got our feel. And he said, no, 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 don't deceive yourself. It was great that you heard it, but now don't just hear it. I want you to apply it tomorrow. 
When you go to that job and what you heard, Pastor Mike didn't teach all this for me to walk. I'm telling you, some of y'all going to walk into a store and the Holy Spirit's going to whisper to you, go get a Bible. And you'll be like, I know he didn't say that. I'm about to go get this Coke. <laughs> He's trying to help you be able to apply what you've heard. Don't ignore it. Apply the word of God that you read in this devotional. Apply the word of God that you hear through other sermons and through podcasts. Apply it. And how do we practically do that? Well, I'm just going to tell you what I do. I find a scripture for every situation. How do I make the word very applicable in my life? I find a scripture for every single situation. Let me tell the true story as we end. Um, I was up here one Saturday studying for the word of God. And uh, this is when I was uh, really kind of struggling with the topic. And I knew God was trying to say something. And uh, it was coming through. And uh, I was up here till almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Because I always want to make sure that whatever I speak to you guys is filet mignon. That when I come in here, it's a word from God. And it's not me just getting up here and just saying some stuff. And so I was here. And while I was in here studying for the word of God, somebody broke into my truck on the side of the church. Stole my wife's iPad. Stole money. They took all the stuff they just run it on the truck. I was like, this is holy ground. They have the audacity to come up in the house of God and steal from the man of God. Like, I was pissed. <laughs> and now I got to minister to y'all with a pure heart in less than seven hours. And right then, I remembered a scripture in Ephesians that Paul said, Ephesians 6, that he said that the word of God is a shield of faith. It's a shield of faith. So what I decided to do is get a scripture, go to the word and start to declare something that would be able to bring peace and life and joy. Because I was about to act a fool. I wanted the video. I called Bobby. I said, we're going to get this fool. I mean, I was, I, y'all. But then I went to the word. And I found Psalms 144 that says there will be no breaching of my walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. And I begin to declare that I say ain't nobody ever stealing from me. There will be no more dissension. There will be no more breaching of my walls. And I stood on the word. And as I begin to declare that and walk around this church and walk around my house and walk around, the peace of God came on the inside of me. There was a confidence that formed in me because I was applying the word of God. So somebody in this place may be feel defeated today. So you need to apply Romans 831. So what shall we say then? <laughs> In response to all of these things that got me feeling defeated. If God is for us, who can be against us? You need to apply the word of God. Write it on your mirror. Put it as your screensaver. Repeat it daily. Some of you have been walking in insecurity and you've been feeling down and out. Maybe Romans 8.37 is for you. In all of these things, we need to know that we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And if you're afraid, afraid of the future, afraid of failure, maybe Psalms 34, 4 can work for you. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? Don't just hear the word. Don't just assimilate it into your life, but apply it in every area of your life. Pastor Mike, why are you going so methodically through this entire thing? I want your life to be built on a solid foundation of the word of God. So that when winds blow, say, I ain't tripping. I got the plug. <laughs> the word supplies me with everything that I need. And today I believe that it is your day to stay plugged in to God. Thanks for checking out today's message. During our series, Charged Up, we want you to be able to plug into God through daily devotion. And an easy way to do that is following along with our 30-day reading plan. It's as simple as going to our website, transformchurch.us, where you can click on the link from the homepage. 
From there, you're gonna get a daily worship song, a daily prayer, and a link to go to the Bible app so you can read along with us. Let's get charged up together 